let's go ahead and get started. So I'd just like to start by saying we have finished the last Monday and the last Tuesday of this quarter. They are gone. It always warms my heart every time I can check off a day, especially Monday. All right. So today we're going to be going over pyrimidine synthesis. Okay. And once we've made the pyrimidines, uh, really quick, what are the pyrimidines? The uracil, uracil, uracil thiamine, 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 and yeah. cysteine. Yeah. cysteine. All right. I want to say tyrosine or some other. Cytosine, cytosine. excuse me. All right, I'm going to do that again. Cysteine, okay. cytosine. No, what I'm talking about is the uh, the pyrimidine cytosine. But I almost always say cysteine because apparently I think protein tastes better than nucleic acids. <laughs> so yeah. How would you know? How would I know? I. You should see me when I get out my jeweler's lens and I start like poking cells apart and it's like, there's some nucleic acid. All right. It's delicious. It's like trying to get the inside of clams. Okay. Um, yes, so pyrimidines. We're going to start with synthesis. And the first thing that we do is we make um, uracil monophosphate. And that's what we're going to be doing here. And there's three phases to it. And once we get uracil monophosphate, then we're going to take that and we're going to change it into cytosine and thiamine. And so all three of them come from, uh, you make uracil first and then you branch it into the other two. After that, we will talk about breaking them down briefly and then we'll hit some diseases and drugs. Okay, so first things first. We are going to have a uh, base that is made of two major components, okay? And this is going to be called um, carbamoyl aspartate, okay? That's what this molecule is. And carbamoyl aspartate has these two guys right here from Carbamoyl phosphate is the molecule. So, carbamoyl phosphate, P with a circle around it means phosphate. And then we get the aspartate from aspartate. That's kind of nice. All right, so these two guys will come together to make carbamoyl aspartate. Okay, now um, really quick, we're going to go a little bit further back. And how do you make carbamoyl? Carbamoyl is going to come from two things. I thought I heard someone who is answering. What is it? Carbon dioxide. Glutamine. And a carbon source, which can either be carbon dioxide or bicarbonate. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with uh, carbon dioxide, but um, bicarbonate is also correct. It's just a carbon source. Okay. Okay. So now let's go ahead and stick in the enzymes, and then we'll stick some memory dealies. All right. So glutamine and carbon dioxide are forming carbamoyl phosphate. So the enzyme is going to be called carbamoyl phosphate synthetase. synthetase. If it says synthetase, what does it use? ATP. ATP. Excellent. Carbamoyl phosphate synthetase Two. Where did we see number one? In the urea cycle. In the urea cycle. Excellent. Okay. So, um, now that was the enzyme to make carbamoyl phosphate. Now, in order to take carbamoyl phosphate and aspartate and put them together, these two molecules here, one's a nitrogen, the other one I believe is a carbon. Um, 
are from the carbon oil, and then the other four are coming from the aspartate. In order to make this, we need an enzyme, and this is going to be called, this enzyme is, I'll put it beneath, that'll make more sense. This enzyme of putting these two guys together is going to be called uh, aspartate trans carbamoylase. Now, we've already got the urea cycle in our head, and so who can tell me what was the enzyme that came after car in the urea cycle, really quick, carbon oil phosphate synthetase 1 in the urea cycle. The next enzyme was, was ornithine, ornithine. ornithine. transcarbamoylase. And so instead of ornithine transcarbamoylase, we have aspartate transcarbamoylase. We are taking an aspartate, in this case, an aspartate, and then we are transferring it over to join a carbamoyl phosphate. And you're transferring the carbamoyl group off of its phosphate, which is why it's a transferase. And so then you put them all together. Aspartate joining or transferring to carbamoyl. So aspartate transcarbamoylase. And this is one of the enzymes that I recommend muttering under your breath so you have some motor memory if ever you're like, what the heck? So, because once you're able to say it, it's much easier to remember it. All right, so this is what I like to uh, call phase one of making the uh, uracil monophosphate. So, and it's the uh, carbon moilase. or C phase, is at least how I think about it. You can do whatever you want, but I find that splitting into phases is extremely helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and divide this with a blue marker. And then memory, um, I like to think of a car. with a huge pile of glue over it, which is representing the glutamine. And then we have some smoke coming off over here. So glutamine plus CO2 equals carbamoyl phosphate. All right. And then over here, I like to keep all the pictures together. Over here, and then we also have, if your car gives out, what's your secondary transportation? It's a donkey. <laughs> Standard American family. <laughs> All right. And then if you uh, put these two together, then you have the name of our last molecule, which is carbamoyl aspartate. All right. And so then you just join them together and it's carbamoyl that's a donkey aspartate. That is so not a donkey. That's why I drew it small. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, when looking at the first thing, glutamine, giant pile of glue, carbon dioxide, some smoke coming off the car. Those two join to make carbamoyl phosphate. Carbamoyl phosphate and aspartate will come together to make carbamoyl aspartate. And then um, go ahead and peg in the enzymes. Wait, what, what, did you have the phosphate in the picture or was that? No. Just I the CO2 and the carb. Yeah, just enough to cue you onto the molecule. Okay. If you make a, pictures for all of them, then eventually you mess it in. These pictures are harder to remember than the molecule. <laughs> so. No, not true. <laughs> it can be. And then it's a nightmare. But, um. But a carb will give off CO. <laughs> yes, yes, it would give off CO. It's a special car. Show now, this, this is uh, environmentally, well, I don't know if that makes it more environmentally friendly, actually, but <laughs> less likely to give you carbon monoxide poisoning. That's what we were shooting for. Oh, okay. All right. Which is great for families that need a donkey. Yes, perfect. Okay, so go ahead and first, using the pictures or not, as you choose, review how to make the carbon oil phosphate the fact that there is aspartate, and then putting them together. So one, two, three, and there's an enzyme here and an enzyme there. So go ahead and review, see what you can pull up.
Okay, so excellent. Now let's move to the next phase. Okay, so that was all phase one. Go ahead and close that out of your head. Oh, question, go for it. Yeah, so like, um, are all of those make the first phase? All of those um, yeah, so I just, and the phases are, are a uh, Taylor thing, not a biochemistry, everybody thinks of these phases, but yeah, I would say everything above the blue line is part one, and that's how I would try and, do I have part one, or phase one, and that way you're breaking it up so it's not this big oh, mess in your head. like the first phase. Oh, base. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is, all this together, you're making carbon oil aspartate, which is a base, which is a free base, so you call this... It's a uracil. It's not uracil not yet, right. but it is considered a base. It's, okay. But it's not one of the ones that we use in DNA or RNA. And so it's just like carbon oil aspartate. It's a base, but it's not what we're going for. But it does fit in the family of molecules that we would call bases. Cool? Okay, yeah, no worries. All right. So now that we've got carbon oil aspartate, we want to go to um, get closer to uracil, and the next phase that is helpful to go through, I should be drawing all those in green, oh well. Um, this is going to be the phase that I just call orotate, because everything in it has to do with orotate in one form or another. And so phase two, orotate, we are going to First, make dihydro. Orotate. And some of you who might be looking at slides and seeing <coughs> it named differently, di, um, hyd dihydro boritic acid. Um, whenever you see eight at the end of the molecule, uh, I, th I, don't, I think it's universal. I've at least seen it with all the molecules I know of that end in eight. I haven't verified that this is like a naming convention. But whenever you see something ending in eight, be suspicious that you can replace the eight with um, oic acid, dihydro or or it's, um, oroic acid because it just depends on what pH this is in, on which way they name it. So both those things are the same molecule, okay? Mm -hmm. So dihydroorotate is a heck of a lot easier to remember in my opinion. So dihydroorotate, and we would make this with the enzyme. I'm tempted to draw an arrow and say that thing, but dihydroorotase. Okay, so this is dihydroorotase, and that will facilitate carbon oil aspartate becoming dihydroorotate. So first thing to remember, dihydroorotate, enzyme named after it makes it. Next, once we have dihydroorotate, um, it has an extra hydrogen on it that we don't want, hence the dihydro. Right now it's got two hydrogens, and we want to take one of those off. And once we take one of those off, it will be called... Orotate. Orotate has one hydrogen um, on it. So for this, I really am going to use the little arrow thing because I just I have to. That thing, dehydrogenase. Okay? So notice both the enzymes, happily enough, are named after this middle guy. Dihydroorotate. So it's dihydroorotase and then dihydroorotate dehydrogenase. We have a dehydrogenase. What's happening? <laughs> NAD to NADH. Excellent. All right. And so I'm going to say plus, meaning it produces NADH. And you are making the NADH. So it goes NAD to NADH. Because you're taking one of the hydrogens off the dihydroorotate and putting it onto something else. And so that's why you're gaining an NADH, is because you're literally like, I need to get that hydrogen off, and now I can use it for energy. Great, win-win. Okay? Maketh sense. Good. All right. Um, yeah, so that was part two. And for this, 
for those who like pictures, I literally just have a balloon, two balloons, and then one balloon. And these balloons, if I had a gold colored marker, would be gold, because oro in Spanish means gold, but that's going too far. Dihydro to single hydro. So it's dihydro orotate and then orotate. And so don't need more pictures than that, the dihydro will remember. Um, so will remind, I should say. Okay, so when you feel ready, any questions? Guy, can you explain the balloon again? Yeah. The balloon? It's two to one. It's yeah, it's basically okay. dihydro and Two. hydrogen. Okay. Is, yeah. These are hydrogen balloons. Okay, okay. Dihydro, and then at least in my head I colored them gold, but that's because oro means gold in Spanish, and you don't need to do that if that's like, please, no more. This is not going back to high school Spanish. I like this is not Portuguese happening. too. <laughs> Portuguese too? Excellent. That's actually why I kept it in. And French. And French? Is it really? Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. All right. Drum, after drum. this, we just killed a bunch of them right there. After this hour, we're going to have a multilingual experience. Vika <laughs> and Juliana are going to come up and educate us. All right. So yeah, that that's why the balloons. Got it. Okay. All right. Go ahead and review. All right, and question? Are we going to talk about regulation later? Or are we, talking about we are going to talk about regulation later. Right now, I wanted to get like baseline, okay. and then at the end, we're going to hit diseases, drugs, regulation, and a couple other fiddly bits that I wanted to hit once we've got it solid in our head. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so hopefully, this was, uh, hopefully, you got this. Um, remember, as soon as you get dihydroorotate, then you know both the enzymes because it's just TACE on the end or dehydrogenase on the end. And then you've got your two molecules, you've got your two enzymes, you can move on. So, next. Next. Phase three is just going to be um, the phase where PRPP comes in. All right, so I just call it PR, PRPP, or phase three. Where did we see PRPP before? Purines. Purines. I'm so happy you remember. Okay, so we're going to need PRPP for pyrimidine synthesis too. And so both of them utilize PRPP. What pathway, biochemical pathway, did we get PRPP from? PPP. The PPP. So we just take out the R. <laughs> Here it is. It's fantastic. So. Um, if you have elevated PPP, you will have more purines. You will also have more pyrimidines um, because both of them need PRPP, <laughs> even though um, the, the purines are made directly like PRPP is the thing you're attaching stuff to in, right. in the purines. This one, you're just using it for one piece, and you're actually doing a whole bunch of work without the PRPP, but you still need it to finish the process. So, make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't know what accent that was. Um, <laughs> so, so done. <laughs> there we go. All right. So, orotate is going to come and be acted on by this should be PR. So, just to verify. Okay. All right. I'm going to write out the whole name, and then I'm going to tell you how I abbreviate it, because it's obnoxious. Phosphoribosyltransferase. Bonus question. Who can tell me what phosphoribosyl? What the heck? We're transferring this from somewhere. Where are we going to get from? Where do we get phosphates and ribosyls? That's a good answer. It's not the one I'm looking for. 
that if ribose sugar is definitely a part of it, what does PR and PRPP stand for? Phosphoribosyl. So we are literally taking the PR part of PRPP and sticking it onto orotate. That's all this enzyme is doing. Okay? So we are going to see over here PRPP coming in and then leaving as just PP. And then that's a sub I because it's now inorganic phosphates are left behind. Okay? So. PRPP is, I know that's too small to see, I didn't give myself quite enough room. You know, I, I'm going to make it bigger and I'm just going to bring it down a bit. PRPP, phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate, meaning two phosphates. And then that is going to change into just PP, sub I, meaning pyrophosphate that is inorganic, it's just floating in solution, it's the leftovers. And so we've put the PR, the phosphoribosyl, onto the orotate. So this is where the orotate is starting to look a lot more like uracil because now it has a ribose group. Remember how we need a sugar, a phosphate, and a base? We got the base. This is where we get the sugar and the phosphate. All right. So this is going to be orotate. monophosphate. So OMP. I wrote out the first one just because, so that you know what the O stands for. So it's literally, what was the thing we had before? Monophosphate. Okay? OMP. Transferase makes me think that it's going to put it on something else, not, not break it off and have it be free. So... Um, that molecule is donating to the origin. Yes. Very good observation was made. Transferase makes you think that you're going to be donating something, and in fact, that is what happened. So the PR, the phospho and the ribate, uh, ribosyl group, or ribose group, were torn off of PRPP and then put on to orotate. So you were transferring a group. So that is indeed what is happening. So whenever you see transferase, it's like what's being torn off and given, you know, like redistribution of money. <laughs> All right. All right, so next... After we have orotate monophosphate, that's nice and all, but we really want uracil monophosphate, UMP. And for this to happen, the enzyme of choice is going to be, ah, uh, yes. Orotate decarboxylase, also fondly known as that thing, decarbo decarboxylase. All right. Oh, did I, I put orotate? I should have put, that's because I wrote orotate here, and so in my head it's like that thing. All right. But uh, OMP, so it's the whole molecule, so I am going to abbreviate it. OMP decarboxylase. Sorry? It's that thing decarboxylase. It is that thing, but I wrote it wrong. But you can't read my writing, so you wouldn't have been able to tell anyway. I should have left it. So is one P decarboxylase the same as orotidylic acid decarboxylase? Orotidylic. Say that one more time. At? What are you looking at? Orotidylic decarboxylase. And what was the first half of the question? Is OMP decarboxylase the same thing? Because in the slide she has. She has an image of OMP going to UMP with orotidylic acid decarboxylase. Okay, then I would, I would understand that to be another name of the same enzyme. I am not familiar with that one, though. So if you go through other slides, um, this one is named in the one that she typed out at the bottom. So I'm, gonna, that's, I'm glad that you brought that up so there's not confusion. Um, this is one of the names. There are actually, for a lot of these enzymes, different names. <laughs> Why so do they like, do that? Because <laughs> some of them get tired. Your name's stupid. I'm just going to use mine, published paper. Oh, I studied this published paper. I now have a new name. Oh, this is the name. What's that other name? Never heard of it. Yeah, so it's fun. As soon as you publish a paper, you can do anything you want, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, then you have UMP. Congratulations, you have arrived at uracil monophosphate. Let's go ahead and, for this, 
I just have a, uh, a girl over here. She's wearing a dress because she's a girl. And that makes it easy to tell in the picture. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get lynched. All right. Someone's going to go key my motorcycle. All right. And this is someone that just says, oh, you. And so she's got her. She's got her hand. All right. Oh, you. And that's just <laughs> OMP, then UMP. Okay? So that's the only picture that you need. It's just like, which one goes first, honestly, is the more difficult part. And so, oh, you. Okay. So. Why, thank you. I can't change it, so I'm glad it's acceptable. <laughs> Was there a question that I... What's in the square? The, the letter O, and then oh. the letter U. Oh, oh you. Okay. And so it's orotate, and then you. So I, I shouldn't have written orotate. That's why I don't take notes. I read them instead of thinking. All right. Um, OMP and UMP. I like it. All right, so let's go ahead and review the uh, last section, and then we'll try to review from the beginning all the way through. Just take it section by section, not all of it together, otherwise your head starts to explode. Because there's only a few pieces in each section. So let's start with the third section. Go ahead and review. Got two molecules, two enzymes. So hopefully that worked well. Um, one other thing that I said I would give you um, phosphoribosyl transferase. The easier way that I like to remember that and think about it is just PR transferase, because that's literally what it's doing is the PR from PRPP. So PR transferase is way easier to remember. And if you need to get the rest of the name from that, it's lighter on the head to say, what does PR stand for? Then what was that whole thing? Oh, yeah, that's also PR transferase. Hopefully that makes sense. PR transferase is shorter. All right. So, we have now successfully made uracil. All right, go team. Um, we are now going to take uracil. Oh, yes, and then um, if you would like to go ahead and try and review section one, then section two, then section three, I'm going to write a few things up while you're doing that. Whether you do that in class or after class, up to you. We probably won't have time to do all of it, so... Do what you can, and then maybe review after class. Okay, um, if you made it all the way through, fantastic. If you didn't, that was pretty brief for it to be all the way through when it's still new material. Um, but let's move forward, and I'll post this for later. UMP, I've just removed it from over here. It's the same product. We've just moved it to how are we going to make CMP and TMP, cytosine and uh, thiamine. So UMP is going to first be made into UDP, just like you can have AMP, ADP, and ATP. You can have mono, di, and triphosphates on a uracil. So UTP, UDP, UMP, same pattern. We've seen this before. We're just switching the first letter because that's what we're dealing with. Um, to do this first, um, this first reaction, 
I didn't get the feeling that she wanted you to know the enzymes, but for completeness, I'm going to tell them to you. I know that it starts with an R and that it's a kinase. Because, okay, Would I lied. Would you have kinase written in our notes? Yeah. Um, uridylate kinase. So it starts with, it's a U-R, excuse me. Uridylate kinase. And just like was said, all I would really remember is kinase. That's, that's enough. I don't think she cares about this one, but I know some people are like, details, must know details. Because that's, that's me. Okay, so, and that's how we make UDP. Now at UDP, we have a branching, okay? UDP can either go down into making TMP eventually, whereas this one is CMP, all right? Or we can continue towards making CMP. All right, so we're going to continue towards CMP really quick, and this one is going to be ubiquitous something or another kinase. All right, so it's just another kinase, also starts with U. Yeah, and I literally just wrote ubiquitous kinase. And it is named ubiquitous something or another kinase. So, all right, and this will make UTP. Once you have UTP, then you can take that and use I'm going to verify this real quick. Use the time to make your notes super pretty. You see what I did? No. Through your name? Okay. Is that how you spell ubiquitous? Um, ubiquitous is spelled U B I Q U I T O U S. I have no idea if I spelled it that way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's ironic. I can read a word and tell if it's spelled wrong, unless I wrote it, and then I can't spell it, even if I can tell it's spelled wrong. That's wrong. Well, can you fix it? No, I'm not a productive member of society. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I got mad love for you. You helped me pass all my tests. Oh, it's good times. Okay, so, yeah, they're disagreeing on one letter, which is driving me nuts. Okay, we have, what is it we're trying to make? We're trying to make T CTP. CTP. Oh, CTP. So we're going to call it CTP synthase, or, yeah, it's going to be synthase. It's already got its three carbons, so that one slide's wrong. Synthase. All right, synthase. And you make CTP. Happy time. All right. So you're, you're saying that first kinase was not as important? Neither of those kinases right here are super important. Matter of fact, I will like. They're not even. I'll go ahead and put okay. just a, a quick slash. You can still read, hopefully, what they say, but that was just for completeness. The, the only one, CTP synthase, you probably want to know that because okay. it's. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Moving on to TMP, we are going to have where we've got, oh uh, yeah, the registered nurse. All right, ribonucleotide reductase. All right. Ribonucleotide reductase. And ribonucleotide reductase is going to give us, oh, that's green. Can you give us the color green? All right, we have D U D P. And then, via magic that was not covered in the slides and is definitely not important. Magic. We get 
um, D U M P. So we have um, dud P, I guess, you know, dudum, whatever. And then you have dump. Dump is much easier to remember. All right. And then I'm drawing a long line for this one because there's some jazz that goes on in the middle. There's only one. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say only one. So um, now we want uh, D U M P to become uh, D T M P. Okay? And so that means that we have reached deoxy um, thymine monophosphate, and then that would become. Just thymine monophosphate. Okay, so the enzyme is going to be. Okay, so now. Thymidylate synthetase. All right. And this one, you're going to see. Um, you saw on your slides that this is the one that has like a big circle next to it, and there's a bunch of jazz going on. Simple thing first. Simple thing is it's changing dump into DTMP. And this is um, the enzyme which I've already dumped from my head. <laughs> thymidylate synthetase. Oh, that makes sense. You're making the thyme. Okay, fine. Almost that thing. All right. Thymidylate synthetase. Okay, now this is going to use some cofactors that we're going to draw on this side. But before we do that, and I'm going to do this one with you because I didn't have time to review it beforehand, which is something that I look forward to doing now. So go ahead and review basically UMP to UTP, and then you use CTP synthase to make CTP. Done. And then this one. Um, the two enzymes and just UDP, UMP, uh, and they're all deoxy to TMP. And so two enzymes and then all the deoxys that we're going through, which is literally just taking it um, down a phosphate and then swapping it. Any questions on understanding before we do memory? Good? All right. Let's go ahead and go through. All right, hopefully that was good time. And now we're going to touch on the uh, little circle that you got going off to the side, which is dealing with folate, because um, you're going to have, uh, I'll draw this in blue, because it's kind of a whole other cycle. So we use this to uh, donate a methyl group, and that methyl group came from um, N5N10-methyl, methyl, let's see. Methylene THF. THF, tetrahydrofolate. THF, thank you. OK? And so that went over and it donated its methyl, which means that now, instead of naming the places N5, N10, where the methyl or methyls are, now it's just nothing methyl, THF, meaning THF. And actually, I believe, since it is demethylated, it is now DHF. Okay? We need to get it back to T. So this is, it has a uh, methyl. Now it does not. So it's demethylated uh, or dihydrofolate. Hopefully that makes sense. 
you'll get this one again. This is more so that when you see the folate cycle, hopefully this will click and you'll get it faster in nutrition or in um, a couple other classes it comes up in. Now, once you have DHF, in order to get DHF to uh, become THF again, you're wanting to regenerate it, and so we call it um, DHF reductase, and I just call it duffer. And so you'd use DHF reductase, duffer, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and put a little red mark next to this because this is, again, something that I don't think she expects you to know, but it is good to understand. And it's one of the things that I wish I had understood before coming and seeing it in nutrition, even if I didn't commit it to memory. All right, so once we've got the DHF to go back to THF, then you can get the THF to get its methyl back. And the methyl is joined on using, it should be uh, MTHFR, I think, but let's verify. DHFR, yeah. Okay. Oh, wait, no. Uh, Duffer is what we just used. So this is... Um, Steering glycine hydroxymethyltransferase. Yeah, hydroxymethyltransferase. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to write that one down. I'm not even going to write it. So you transfer it and it goes up here. So, um, and this is all tetrahydrofolate or dihydrofolate in some form. And so if you have a, f the reason that it does matter for your test upcoming is not all the details of it, but if you don't have folate, what are you not going to be able to do? Methylation. Methylation. Or you won't be able to get, yes, in DNA synthesis, you'll never get your thymine. thymine. So that's what I would like you to take away from this is folate is important. And you have to do this whole recharge thing every time you use folate so that you can reuse it. But all right. Moving from there, we get to the parts that I find are kind of lighter on the brain. Okay? Next, breaking it down. So we have TMP, we have CM or T or any form, CMP and UMP, all right, coming in here. TMP is going to be broken down in a series of steps that you are not expected to know, except what it ends up as. It ends up as isoamino butyrate. <clears throat> okay, isoaminobutyrate, and I believe it's beta, excuse me, beta isoaminobutyrate. Whereas this other guy is beta, both of these, C and U, will be uh, beta alanine. Now, um, for those guys, uh, yeah, we can throw a picture up there. We've got, how many of you guys know Weird Al? You're going to know him by the end of this. Mm -hmm. All right, Weird Al, and he's holding a cup with ice in it. And so it's just something that starts with Al, beta alanine, something that starts with ice, beta isoaminobutyrate. It just gives you the beginning. And um, that's just Weird Al's hair. Apparently that's all I remember of Weird Al. Okay. Huh, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> that is actually Okay, so that's what I would do right there. And now, concept. These guys are both soluble. So if they are soluble... Beta isoaminobutyrate from TMP, from thiamine breakdown. Okay. So this is all um, metabolism. I think it's beta amino isobutyrate. Beta amino isobutyrate? Okay. I will go ahead and flop that around then. Beta amino. Thank you. Keep me on my toes. Isobutyrate. Okay. There's still the iso, which is how I do that. So. Um, which is probably why I keep putting it first, is because I keep thinking, I saw something. All right. 
Metabolism. All right, this is just breaking it down. Now, if these two guys are soluble, and uric acid from purines is not soluble, if we have a ton of these guys, do you think that we would or would not get gout? Would not, not. soluble. You just pass them right there. Right. And that's why we don't see diseases when we have, we don't see symptoms when we have buildup of these things. They're soluble. They're not going to get lodged in the joints and cause you a lot of, you know, grief. So knowing that these are soluble is important. And we are grateful that they are soluble. So from this, um, you can go ahead and uh, review metabolism really quick, and then we'll cover a few diseases and drugs. So Weird Al is holding a cup of ice. Yes. So alanine and isobutyrate, beta amino isobutyrate. Do we need to know how CTP becomes CNP? CT, no, it's, it's uh, <laughs> hopefully you use it for energy somewhere. ATP and GTP are used occasionally. CTP, I imagine, is used somewhere. But no, you are not expected to know how that magically happens. You're talking yeah. about enzymes. We need to know what happens, but not the enzymes. Right. Okay, thanks. So you'll break it down from whatever TP to whatever DP to whatever MP, same way you would, I mean, you're using the energy rather than throwing it away. And then you'll take those nucleotides and break them down into alanine and isobutyrate, beta amino on the one, beta on the other. Anyway, okay, so diseases and drugs. Two things everybody's crazy about. So, um, and some random other facts. So actually, let's start with regulation. And then from regulation, we'll go to some random little factoids that she wants you to know. And then we'll do diseases and drugs. So first, regulation. These guys And actually, right there too. You know, I'm going to do the random fact first because it has to do with the regulation. All right. These three, these first three enzymes, they are all on the same protein. The protein has three little widgets sticking out of it, and it does all three of these jobs. And we name each of these jobs as a different part of that one protein. Okay? And so the name of the protein, as I recall, it's, it's CAD, but yes. I think it's like carbon oil phosphate aspartate trans carbamoylase dihydroorotase protein and it's like whatever she just called it cat it's, it's cat. cat in case you're ever wondering what it stands for because I'm always like what's the acronym all right <laughs> so these three equal asterisk a single asterisk equals cad okay and that cad protein is both the rate limiting step rls rate limiting step and the uh, most regulated step, okay? And so, especially these two enzymes for regulation, you will have um, feedback from products. So UMP, and I'm not gonna write these ones down, because as soon as it, you look at it, it makes sense and try and make it make sense rather than having it be another bullet point to memorize. Go ahead and write it down somewhere on your paper, but um, UMP would say, we don't need to do this, we have enough, and so it would shut it off. So UMP is going to down-regulate CAD, especially the first couple enzymes. Make sense? We got it, we don't need it, turn it off. Now, if we have PRPP, and we have um, a whole bunch of ATP, PRPP and ATP. Those are both things that we use to make all this stuff. And so if we have a whole bunch of reactants, then of course we're going to go and say, hey, let's use them. ATP is used in synthetase and it's used through a few of these other ones. And So ATP says go this way. PRPP says go this way. We've got it. Let's use it. So those are going to positively regulate these guys these first, the same first enzymes. 
Cool? Makes sense? Okay. Awesome. So it's product. If you have a lot of reactants, Reactant. then you're going to make products. If you have a lot of products, you're going to say, shut up, I have enough products, go away. And you're going to flail. All right. Next, we have another, and I'm going to double asterisk this one. And you can see we're getting some details on these, and that's why I didn't want to memorize it with the details the first time, because then it's too much junk. Just get the basic pathway, then add the details on it. But these two, um, in the PRPP phase, where you have PR transferase and OMP decarboxylase, both of those are actually on the same protein as well. And that protein by itself is called UMP synthase. And it's like, that's nice. So you'd call those together, and I'll actually draw them on UMP synthase. And I will put a green circle around it because that's the name of the protein. Okay? That makes those two guys. So this guy. So we have the first three on one, the last two on one, and then dehydrogenase is the only free floating enzyme. Okay. Um, now we've talked about regulation, we've talked about some fiddly bits. Now let's get into diseases and drugs really fast with the diseases and drugs. Cheers. We have the drugs are going to be on this one, where we are going to have 5 fluorouracil. 5 fluorouracil inhibiting this one. That's a drug. And go ahead. if you guys have somewhere to go, by all means, go ahead. I'm going to finish up just so it's on the video. Yeah, we'll and for those who do have time. We'll catch it up. Awesome. So, so that's 1-5. Um, sorry, whenever I do a drug, I put it inside of a pill. Oh. And so that's, that's a pill. Oh, okay. And then I have a little line to make. Yeah, anyway. It's 5-fluorouracil. And then we also have over here methotrexate. Methotrexate. And both of these are anti-cancer. Okay? And the reason that they're anti-cancer is because if you can't make one of your nucleotides, what is the favorite thing that cancer likes to do? Replicate. Replicate and divide. It likes to grow out of control. So we are literally saying we can't replicate because we can't make all the different kinds of DNA nucleotides. And so it slows cancer way down. Of course, you can't have normal cells divide either when they want to. And so this is anti-cancer, but it will also, uh, you're going to have some jacked up division. And yeah, those are the two drugs. And now finally, the two diseases are oritic acid urea, meaning that you have um, oritate or orit or oritic acid in the urine. And those are if you have um, these guys jacked up. So this is going to be, um, these two would be jacked up in type one, type one has both of them jacked up, which is an easy way to just say type one is both of them. And with that, you're not going to be able to make the pyrimidines, you're not going to be able to divide, and so you'd see what happens if you can't divide, you're going to have retardation of growth. Someone, a child who's trying to grow, they can't make new cells very well, they're going to have retarded growth, slowed down or poor growth because you can't make new cells, can't make your DNA. So type 1 is a lack of UMP symptoms? Uh, yes, and both of its functions, which is important because the other one is only one of its functions. Um, the other thing to quickly say is that, and I'll write it here, so one is retarded growth, and then the other one is anemia particularly megaloblastic, meaning lots of them, mega, so, so you remember, yeah, mega, yeah, 
elastic. This, this one means lots of cells, and then macrocytic means large cells. Okay? And then type 2 is only the uh, OMP decarboxylase. And so I'm going to go ahead and put right here type 2. And this one only has the uh, anemia. It doesn't slow down or break the production of UMP and the other pyrimidines enough to give you the retarded growth. But you still get anemia, the same megaloblastic macrocytic anemia. All right, any questions? Sydney? Um, do you know how particular she is with the uh, ATP regulations and stuff? With Are the ATP, sorry? Regulations in this pathway? Um, with this pathway, I don't recall how picky she was, but if if you just remember it's regulated positively or negatively in the first bit, mm -hmm. then that should see you through because it's really, do you have a lot of pieces to make it? Then you should make it. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't, if you have a lot of products, then you wouldn't. Well, my next question is like, where's the metabolism? Is the CMP and UMP? Mm -hmm. Is that the UMP from? Yeah, it's. It's UMP from anywhere, whether we um, are pulling it from DNA, where we would use all of this, so this whenever we're like done with it. So this is another thing, like, yeah. it's not in the pathway. It's right, so if you wanted to have a little conceptual thought right here, you could say, use stuff, you've used it, and now you don't need it. So you've used it for maybe a year, now the cell has fallen apart, and we, and we have more than we need, because we ate some or something, for whatever reason, we no longer need it. So, no need goes down there. So it might have been made this way, and then it stays in its form for who knows how long, and then just eventually we don't need it, so we're going to break it down. So yeah, it doesn't get made and then immediately broken down. That would be silly later. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so um, the last thing after, so again, I review each of these in the boxes in just one chunk at a time, and then at the end, the last one that I didn't really box into a single place, I would just say, what was the uh, fiddly bit, so the two proteins, what was the regulation, and then what were the two cancer, uh, the two drugs and the two diseases, so there's four different things, special, regulation, um, drugs, and cancer, and then that's it. Thanks, guys. Oh, what question? Is, what is the two drugs? <laughs> I couldn't see. I Five can't see that one. Your cell and methotrexate. Right. And the two proteins. And the methotrexate. Those are the two drugs. The the oh, the two proteins. There's um, CAD, which are the ones that have yeah. a single asterisk, oh, and then you have UMP synthetase, which are the ones with two asterisks. So those Asterisks. are enzyme yeah. proteins that are enzymes. T R E. Those are proteins that have multiple enzymes on them. Oh, okay. So you have one protein, and it's got like one or two or three, two or three um, different arms that do different jobs. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I, do you know she gave us an assignment after our peering lecture, and it was to look up and see what pathways produce all these different ATP, GMP, like... I, so I started doing like reactions like out of all the pathways and like if they